everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I pondered on this idea and I really wanted to do another sit down video and I kind of wanted to make this one a little bit more intimate where I wanted to like, I don't know, kind of like I'm sitting down having a conversation of a friend and one thing that's been on my mind is the mind of a creative. What does that mean? I feel like it means something different for each and every one of us. I feel like creative people need to create and if we don't we're stuck at dead-end jobs and we find ourselves very unfulfilled in life and i don't know i guess this video is for people that are creative and you have a dream and you have a goal and sometimes it feels further away than it actually really is and that's the thing because, you know, it's the depth perception thing. We really don't know how far things are away. The mind of a creative is waking up and seeing life and it's colorful. And you see all the details on the leaves and the trees and you like really look at things. And I feel like a lot of creatives are observers. We see things for what they are and we see everything. We notice details. I mean, even down to like... You know, even if there's crumbs on the table, just looking at the way that the light catches them and it makes shadows and how you can manipulate light if you're a photographer or how you can blend paint and just, I can't even explain how, they say starving artists, right? And I feel like there's a lot of us that are because number one, we struggle with mental health. Number two, we lack the self-esteem most times. And number three, we're extremely self-critical on ourselves. So, you know, as gifted as we are inside, it's like, how do we take what we have inside of us and turn our passion into something, turn our passion into something of substance, something that has meaning, something that makes us feel like we have a purpose on this earth because there's so many people who are struggling with their mental health and creating helps them, but then they're stuck working, you know, eight hours plus at a job that they absolutely hate and they don't find fulfillment in and then you lack the self-esteem to do better in your life and I don't know I feel like there's this fear-based mentality around just freelancing and doing your own thing and obviously you got to start somewhere and you got to you know market yourself and I, I think personally for myself that's been one of the hardest things for me is marketing myself I feel like a lot of creatives are very introverted I took the Myers-Briggs test I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it but I'm 73% introvert. I thrive the best when I'm alone. I like to be around people, but I need to recharge. And that's usually being by myself and creating. It's doing what I know how to do best. And, you know, I, I shared my mental health story on here. And, you know, when my mom died, I stopped creating. I wanted nothing to do with art. And I can't tell you how much I struggled after that. I can't express enough how much my mental health took a plunge for the dark. I mean, there, I mean, medication couldn't even fix it. Therapy wasn't helping. I was doing everything I could that I knew how to do just to survive and just get by and not want to die. And it wasn't that I absolutely hated life. It was the fact that I was so pained by feeling like I was in this prison, having to follow suit, you know, making people happy. I found myself in this vicious cycle of people pleasing. And when I moved out and I bought my own house and I finally lived on my own, it was the first time in my life where I was like, what, do, what, do, what does Tyler like to do? What do I like to do? What are the things that I like to do? And even though I've went through really shitty relationships and I've, I've gone through things that have been incredibly painful in my life, I've created the best work out of that stuff. That is the stuff that is gold to me. And those are the things that people can't take away from me. I might overshare on some things and I'm very passionate and I'm a very emotional person. And I used to really beat myself up for that. I used to be really hard on myself for being sensitive or crying easily. And, um, you know, it's kind of embarrassing in a way. It shouldn't be, but it's one of the things I'm trying to get used to. And my perception has shifted so much, especially ever since I hit the age of 25 and I moved back home from New Jersey when I was 25. Gosh, that was probably four years ago now. My perception shifted and I found gratitude in the little things and it was something that I was really working on. And I couldn't force myself. Like, I felt gratitude. Like, I was like, yeah, I'm grateful. I said it, but for the first time in my life, when I moved back, I was like, wow. For instance, I drove to this one city for work 
and I hated my job so much and all I thought about on the way to that job was how much I hated my job, how depressed I was, how stuck I felt. And when I moved back, I did that same drive and I looked at the way that the sun hit the corn stalks and how the sun was in the light and the colors of it and I, I started crying because for the first time in my life I felt gratitude. I was like, this is beautiful, this, this life is beautiful. And ever since then, I moved in, I became my own person, I figured out what I really like to do best. I quit doing art for seven and a half years, so like it was just me in this house going stir crazy, trying to figure out how to live by myself and how to cope with that. And I've created some amazing work out of it. The best things have came out of me and you know, it's funny how things change I, I moved back and I started creating and now it's all I want to do. When I wake up in the morning, all I think about, I'm like, oh, I, I have a new idea for a necklace. Oh, I have a new idea for a painting. And the problem I'm running into is I like to dabble into different things. And the problem I'm having with a nine to five job is finding the time to do all the things that I want to do, do all the things that set my soul on fire to be completely free. You know, I, I don't know how else to say that. And it's not saying, oh, I loathe my life entirely. I have a great life, but all I want to do is create. And I know that's what I'm meant to do. And that's how, that's how I thrive the best. I am the best version of myself when I create. My mental health is better. I'm more stabilized. I'm happier. I'm more joyful. And when I'm more creative, I, my cup is getting filled so then I can pour into others and I can, you know, Pour more of myself into relationships and friendships and a lot of people don't understand artists that are not artists. It's not this lazy mentality, it's just seeing life for what it is and how beautiful it is and creating something and connecting with people that do the same thing. I think that that's the coolest part that personally I've came across is finding people who like doing similar things and feeding off of each other. And I think the coolest part about this YouTube channel is I'm actually finding a community. I'm finding people who are supporting me, like encouraging me to do keep, like keep going with this. And even though I only have like 140 subscribers, it's more than I had a few months ago. And I'll be forever grateful for that. Even the number that I'm at and it's not about the number it's the fact of the matter is I'm on this channel because I love to do art I like to share that with people I like to share my ideas and I guess my ultimate goal is to inspire people to chase their dreams because there's so many people around us especially the ones closest to us who want to stick a finger in our face and say you need to do this this way and you need to go to college and you need to get a nine to five job and work until you die. And then like, that's just depressing for a creative person. <laughs> that's like, I, I I have no other, I have no other explanation. Sorry, words are hard. No other explanation other than that sounds like it fucking sucks. No, <laughs> I just feel like artists are different in a good way. You know, I used to think that my creative endeavors had no meaning because I wasn't a doctor, I wasn't curing people, I wasn't, you know, fixing a problem. I felt like the things that I do have no meaning and that was totally bizarre of me to even contemplate thinking like that because without art, what would our houses look like? All the buildings would be the same, all the architecture would be the same, it would be all of these boring square buildings and there wouldn't be any curvature and there wouldn't be any architects because architects are artists and people who take photographs, you know, like without art, there wouldn't be photography. People wouldn't have wedding photos without paintings. I think that that was the biggest one. I was like, well, painting doesn't have any meaning. I poured my heart and soul into every single one of these pieces and it was the hard stuff that I was going through. It was all of the physical issues I had with my body, all of the things that I was going through with my health, my mental health, my physical health. I poured everything that I had into them. I poured my feeling into it and when people look at them, they're bright and colorful and I paint things that are meant to be dark things like moths and skulls and right now I'm painting an owl and I like to bring awareness to those dark things because there is a light and there is a beauty to them and sometimes when you're struggling with your mental health it feels like you're in a room with the lights off and you're waiting for someone to come and save you and the thing is is sometimes we got to look for the light in the little things and sometimes it comes out of us and we find it by doing the things that we know how to do best creating things sharing ideas with like-minded people feeling off of each other and just being inspired and 
living creatively and free and wild and I don't know I don't feel like we're meant to conform to society we're not meant to follow suit and do what everybody else expects us to do I mean it's our life we only have one of them this is all we have and I know I always say that phrase and I've said it since I was younger but right now like I, I feel especially in the last couple of years it's really hit me you know because I'll be 30 next year when well, you're watching this video it'll be this year but and that's the thing like I've spent so much of my life living my life for other people and being a chameleon and trying to shape and mold myself to my environments and I got to this place where I'm almost 30 and it's like life is short we got one shot at this thing if I live till I'm 80, I have 50 years left. How do I want to spend it? What steps do I need to take? What do I need to write down? How am I going to get to where I'm going? Because I'm not meant to conform to society and I, most creatives aren't. Some people are okay with it. I'm not. And I feel like there's other people too and I don't think enough people talk about this. And being a creative is a beautiful thing. It's just trying to be an artist and not a starving one. I've really, I feel like being an artist and wanting it so badly this time and craving the desire to just all I want to do is create it's pushed me outside of my comfort zone and if it never did that I would have never grown one example is when people come into my art booths I have to be like on and I have to be extroverted and I need to communicate and build a community and talk to people and you know, when I get home, sometimes I'm drained, but I come across the coolest people in my booths, people who have experienced loss in their journey in life, and I, I help them with my art. Even necklaces that have little sayings on them. There was a little girl last summer who walked into one of my booths and she started crying, and her friend was comforting her, and I was like, is everything okay? And the one girl looked at me and she said, well, she just lost her mom. Her mom died last year and I don't know what I said to that girl but I felt intuitively I knew what to say to her. I felt like I was led by God and I know that not everybody believes that but I said the right things to her and I was able to be there for someone that it like because I've experienced it. I've lived through it. I've lived through that pain and just being able to connect with people like that and be a light to light the way and let them know that they're not alone is the reason why I exist, the reason why I'm on this earth, and the reason why I do the things that I do. It's all about connection, it's all about finding those little things. I think it's the coolest thing, people buy my things because they think of somebody, and there's necklaces that I make that say I am enough, and they buy it for people who are struggling, and they buy it for them. It's something as a good reminder that they are worthy, and they are important, and their life matters. I had this video idea, and I wrote it down the other day, and I was going to start making a list and I couldn't think of what I wanted to say and so I just pressed record and this is what you're getting because I felt like it had to come straight from the heart because I feel like there's so many people out there who can relate I feel like there's so many people who have gifts and shove them down and if you're seeing this today and you have a gift and you're running from it I just hope that one day you open your eyes and you let down your wall and you start creating again. I ran from it for almost eight years. I wanted nothing to do with it and I struggled bad. Because when you're creative and you're not creating, there's it's almost like you're living in the dark. You're in the bedroom and the blinds are closed and you can't see your way out of anything. I didn't really have a full point to this. I just wanted to share my thoughts, feelings, emotions, and kind of have a sit down video with you guys because I think that, that those are kind of fun for me. So if this video resonated with you and you feel a similar way, feel free to share your story down in the comments. Let me know what you're going through, what your journey is, and if you're struggling with self-doubt and you're not creating because you think your art sucks or you don't think it's good enough, there's somebody out there that can find healing through your work. You just gotta find it within yourself to sit down with that paintbrush or that camera and start again. Give yourself the grace, give yourself the space to just be creative. Express yourself, find yourself. 
dip your paintbrush in colors, go on a trip, go meet new people, learn about their culture, and share with them the things that you like to do too. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that it resonated with you. I hope it made sense because I kind of was rambling. So thank you for watching and let me know if you want to see more of this type of content. I really enjoy the sit down videos and I hope you have a great rest of your week.